Hi there YouTube, Big G back again with another video and sticking with the Amstrad. This is the Amstrad CPC 464 which I used in my last mod um, to get the RGB SCART cable up and running and uh, working lovely. The problem I have now is that I want to start playing some games on uh, the CPC and I've got a lot of tapes but uh, I need to use the built-in cassette deck. But the problem I have is that this built-in cassette deck is not working 100%. It's old, it's rusted, it's dirty inside, uh, the, the belts are stretched, uh, you know, you stick a tape in, you press play, it doesn't turn the tape, and all it's going to do is actually end up eating the tapes. So I need another solution for that, and I've got two options. The first option is if I use one of these external tape cassettes, let me just grab it, if I use one of these. So you plug this in there, connect this up to another tape deck or to your PC and it plays through the little head here and then it reads it on the uh, internal cassette deck. Uh, what I don't like about that solution, although it should still work, is that you're still you are, you are playing an image from one tape deck uh, to another tape deck so you've got all that interference in between and it's got to convert it and unconvert it and so forth which leads to or should, it might lead to a lot of errors when loading. The second option that I have, and this is the one that I'm going to be doing today, is uh, actually adding on an audio jack to my Amstrad. Thereby not needing to use the heads inside here. I still have to put, press play on here in order to activate um, the loading mechanism for the CPC games. But then I can plug it into my PC and load images from there or into another external deck. And uh, this idea came from uh, another YouTuber, Mark Fixes Stuff. I'll put a link down below because he's done exactly the same uh, mod to his Amstrad 464. So I'm going to be following his um, guide as such uh, to do this mod. So please visit his site and uh, thanks again, Mark, for the guide. And I'm going to put it into practice and see if I can get it up and working. Notice straight away that uh, this, the insides of this machine, now that I've got it up and running, is not looking too good. You can see all the rust all over the place. You can see how rusted it is over there. Um, so obviously this tape deck is not working 100%. So you can see I've gone soldered. First of all I've soldered the earth or ground part of my um, audio signal to that pin over there and I will zoom in quickly as well uh, just now and uh, I've taken the audio from this point over there. So two quick little solders connect this end to my mono audio connector and I should be able to then load games via this cable using my PC or another tape recorder and actually then just bypass this hole over here. So let me just see if I can zoom in to get a better picture for you. Let's just get that Okay, so the white cable being the audio part, you'll see that I've soldered it here to that pin over there. That is on the same track from the audio chip at the back there. Um, so soldered that onto there, and the just and then a zoomed in uh, view of the ground. So basically, it is. If you look very, very carefully over there, count back from there, one, two, so it's on that second pin over there. And now let's hook up, or well actually I need to go and scavenge and try and find an audio socket. Okay, I've soldered up this little audio connector that I actually scavenged off a uh, an old uh, PC sound card and because it's mono I can remove one of the legs so quite simply the earth which I wired up there soldered there through to the earth connection the audio through to the audio and uh, that should do it now this I'm actually going to fit most probably onto the side here somewhere if possible I'm going to probably just glue it on drill a hole and glue it on and uh, we should be good to go. So let me do that. Okay, nearly done. 
Um, basically I've just went and put a little bit more glue on here, very untidily as usual, just to keep those um, wires soldered on. I then went and drilled a little hole, I'm sure you can see over there, for the uh, audio jack. I suppose I could even little label it on there as well if I wanted to. And then on the inside you can see there, in order to keep it, it's not one of those self-screwing um, audio jacks, which I should have got, uh, but one of those scavenged ones, you can see I've just gone and put a nice big whack of glue around it over there um, just to keep it in place so that it doesn't and it shouldn't be able to slide out from there even with a, a lot of use so um, guys we're getting to that stage where we can now start testing let me set it up okay guys time to test just as a recap you can see here my CPC I've switched it on giving me that lovely clear picture from the uh, RGB mod that I did there, not composite mod. Thanks for pointing that out to me. As well as the, um, I've got the uh, DC 5 volt coming in from the MP1. Uh, and then my new audio jack at the back there, using the good old Spectrum audio cables running through. Now you can hook this up to your computer, but I'm just going to run it off just this little normal uh, tape tech over here for testing purposes um, and then at a later stage I can download ROMs and play to my heart's content from there so yeah it looks like we've got everything set up so I'm just gonna move this so that we can see what's happening on the screen and the game that I'm gonna be using uh, just to test will be what is this the last V8 by Mad Games just grabbed it at random so I'm gonna slot that in Rewind it. There, it's rewound it. Now, as per the uh, manual for the Amstrad, hold down the control key, press the enter key. Come on. There we are. Uh, press play on the tape deck. Now, I still have to press play on the tape deck, even though the tape deck's not working, so that I can I can get the software to start loading. Then I press any key. So and then press play on the now I've set the volume on the Amstrad to about 75% and the volume on the tape deck at about 75% but uh, if I get errors in that which these old machines are really prone to do then I will change the volume settings Well, it looks like we might be winning guys because it should be drawing the background screen so let's have a look if it does that Success. So it doesn't load the games any quicker, but at least now I have an alternative. Okay, so in conclusion, then, guys, um, it worked great. So I can now play my Amstrad games, although it takes forever to load these games. It's, to me, it seems like it even takes longer than the Spectrum games to load. But uh, who knows? Maybe the board rates are a little bit slower. And uh, as you can see there at the back, there is the little audio jack. Maybe I'll put a label on it. It seems to be very nice and neat. Um, out of the way, you don't really notice it. Um, what I would need to do is I still want to fix this cable up a little bit might drill another hole there and take it out of there instead of it sliding through here and this was for my monitor of uh, uh, Scott uh, RGB mod so my Amstrad now is ready to rock and roll 
and I can start playing some of the great old classics that Novobug is always talking about and to see if this Amstrad is, is really a, a great 8-bit uh, computer. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Give it a try and uh, yeah, cheers from me.